Welcome to this work sample presentation of Gunnar Sedersund, which is me, and I am both a scientist and a concert pianist. And as a concert pianist, I've, for instance, played all of the ballads by uh, Chopin, and in a couple of weeks I will play uh, 16 Beethoven sonatas in 16 days to honor his anniversary, and so on. Uh, apart from that, I'm also a choreographer, uh, working together with a professional dancer and also doing my own choreographies. And uh, some of these have actually won awards and been performed internationally. I will leave all of this for uh, uh, the work sample of Julia Bengtsson, who is the main applicant. So I will talk about the thing that makes me unique in the world that nobody else in the world has, and which I presented, for instance, as a keynote presentation uh, at NIH and at the Swedish uh, parliament. And all of this is based on the, uh, the research of my research group. So all of the people here you see are employed by me, uh, which is possible because of lots and lots of funding from different sources and uh, collaborations with many different scientists. And um, during the last 20 years, I've been doing mathematical models for uh, all of the main organs in the body. So here you see references to uh, scientific papers. Uh, and we have now combined them into a general physiological model that becomes patient-specific by adding patient-specific data. And then we have a specific model for a specific person, which we call a digital twin. So it's like a copy, like a twin. It looks like the person on the outside and on the inside. And we also have a software interface for this. And Sund is the name of our spin-off company. I will come back to this. Uh, so we started by developing this model by describing how insulin binds to the insulin receptor. Um, and uh, we then moved on to describe how this leads to altered glucose uptake in the fat cells, both in healthy controls and in type 2 diabetes in red. And here you see comparison between data and simulations. So, so data are the error bars and simulations are the lines. And what you should see here is that the lines are close to the data, meaning that we had a good explanation for how this data have been produced by the cells. So let's just say one of those for the intracellular part and also see that we have an organ-organ crosstalk. So here we see the adipose tissue glucose uptake, the fat tissue glucose uptake. Uh, and this part of the model has actually been approved by the FDA. Uh, and we also connected this with uh, long-term meal responses. So we have from months down to minutes and seconds and from the whole body down to the intracellular level. And then we make this patient-specific by adding this type of patient-specific data. So here, for instance, MRI data of the fat deposits and the muscle and uh, wearable sensors for the blood sugar levels, where again, you see comparison between data and simulation. So you see that the, the computer simulations lie close to the data, both for the estimation data and for the validation data. So here we train the model uh, and the parameters, personalized parameters uh, on the breakfast response. And we see if we can correctly predict the lunch response based only on what he told us that he ate. And uh, since we could, we can do predictions with uncertainty, which uh, together are the main criteria for the FDA. And uh, we describe heart uh, activity, blood flow, stress responses, brain activity, exercise, weight changes, and so on. And the key thing now, uh, which we launched in Almedalen in 2019, is that we want to use this for better pedagogics. Um, and this is when the arts things comes in. So we want to tell stories that motivate patients to do more prevention and to do better compliance, so better following treatments that the doctor says. Uh, and after the launch event, this has gained a lot of attention. So we were invited to give a joint keynote lecture together with the uh, NIH NIBIB director, Bruce Tromberg, uh, and um, also given this lecture at the Swedish Parliament. And if you want to see that lecture in its original form, it's here. So uh, this is the logotype which symbolizes um, what we want to do. So we have this digital twin technology, a computer copy here of a cedar tree, the first part of my last name. Uh, 
which is developed by sound science. And the sund is the Swedish word for sound. And then we want to use this to tell sound stories that inspires people to, to uh, make sound medical decisions and to lead a sound life. So, for instance, we want to tell these stories to motivate people to do more prevention and rehabilitation. One such example is nuffled liver fat, which is a risk factor for COVID-19. It's connected to obesity and poor diet, uh, and it's, and it's uh, also a risk factor for stroke and other things. So here we see a COVID-19 patient uh, during rehabilitation and during here the acute treatment. And for this nuffled, which is on, on this slide in the example, we can simulate different scenarios to show how the liver fat is getting worse or better depending on the person's diet or exercise. And then we can use this to tell stories. Um, and these type of just conversations with the patient has already been shown to lower the risk of a cardiac event with 30%. And now we want to magnify this effect by also showing the digital twin and telling these type of stories. So uh, here you see again comparison with, between the simulations, which is the line and the error bar, which is the data for how the liver fat is reduced by just a two week diet change, uh, low um, carbohydrate, high fat diet. Uh, we can also add personal sensors and home monitoring to this. And in collaboration with NIH and SciLife Lab, we are now developing similar models also for COVID-19 recovery. So here we have now the software. Uh, where we have a digital twin in the background. This is a specific person that all of these results are for. And you can change here what, what type of diet you want to do, how long it is. You can look at different parts of the body. Here it's an MRI image where we uh, segmented out um, different some of the organs. Um, and then you can also click on these organs and you can see what it looks inside. You can see a microscopy image, for instance. So here now comes up a microscopy image where you see these white bubbles, these uh, white circles, and those are fat deposits. And here you see how the liver fat would go down for this person based on this diet. And then you see how these white uh, infiltrations of fat goes away. So here you see it's much less after just a two-week diet. And then uh, how to bring this into the advanced technology. That is by combining this also with the uh, various things that makes it look like patients are moving. So here we have a, a professional dancer up in the left where you detect the pose and then you use artificial intelligence to make it look like this person here, this woman who, who has never danced these movements, like it looks like she's doing that. Uh, and apart from, uh, from, from doing that, uh, so we implemented this. Uh, so here we have a, a student of mine who is, who is walking, and then you have this artificial intelligence to make it look like this person does the same movement. But apart from that, we also do biomechanics and motion capture, which is a more advanced version where you actually simulate what happens inside the body. So here you see the different muscles and, uh, um, and, uh, and then by adding skin and clothes to this, you get an even more realistic looking video. And this will be part of the project, uh, which can be included in choreographies. And the unique thing that we can do that nobody else can do is to also connect this to the medical processes. So you can look at what happens in the calf muscle and right and left hand side, for instance. So here now we can uh, uh, also look at what happens during the dancing. So here we can click on the blood. We have clicked on the blood and we can look at cortisol levels and fat, how they are changed in this particular case during a 100 minute uh, dance session. So to sum up my contributions here. Part of it has to do with me as a pianist. I will uh, uh, lift out uh, the, the, the key things that happens in the music and collaborate with Julia to, to develop a joint uh, cho choreography. But then the unique thing that I have is this digital twins that looks like patients on the outside and on the inside. And uh, audience members and patients will be included in the choreography. And no one else in the world has this technology to both visualize movements and show health benefits. And uh, apart from this, I didn't talk about this due to lack of time. I also have an augmented reality solution that allows for a safe viewing option uh, in case of the pandemic problems.